These YouTuber right here, bye bye byes, got zeroed yesterday. Normally, I don't make videos on people getting zeroed because it's honestly pretty sad and I don't feel like monetizing on other people, literally losing everything or almost everything on the game. Even if I understand it's part of Rise of Kingdoms, part of the war and part of every kingdom's strategy and it is indeed entertaining content. But in this case, I am making a video because Bye Bye Byes, aside from the mistakes he made, also did a couple of very smart moves and I want to highlight them and also give you my suggestion to get as less dead troops as possible. Before, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, it's 100% free and you can always change your mind later. Let's get started. Hello gamers and welcome back to Wig Gaming. A different video today. First of all, I am sorry that Bye Bye Byes got zeroed. He's not in my KVK, so it's not something I cheer for. If he were to be in my KVK, then it would have been sad, but still useful for us to take out a fighter. First of all, as you can see from his video, congrats to him for the cold blood he kept when he was being rallied. That is already not easy. But let's now get to the point. How to better survive a zero attempt? Depending on the condition, your beginning power, your technology, your commanders and your equipment, surviving is not always an option. Let's say that for a well-coordinated enemy that imprisons you, if you're around 80 million power, it's likely that you're going to be very close to being zeroed or zeroed. If the enemy king uses the imprison skill as soon as you scout somebody or attack a player on the field and activate your war frenzy, you will not be able to shield your city for the entirety of the duration of the Imprison skill. War Frenzy lasts for 15 minutes, while the King's skill in prison lasts for 10 minutes. Sometimes multiple kings of different opponent kingdoms coordinate to imprison the same player, and not everyone knows that you can activate another Imprison skill before the previous one has run out of time. Take a look at this example that I personally recorded yesterday in our KVK. We were trying to zero this one AVG player, Dima, and he already had a double rally on his city. Some kings wait for the previous king's skill to run out of time and then use the next one as soon as they can. This is wrong, because a very quick player can immediately use a teleport and run away as soon as the imprison is over. In this example, since the war frenzy of this player was already running out of time, and we knew it, even if we didn't know exactly when, Slaudi used directly another imprison skill after the previous one from Kingdom 2000 was about to expire, and as you can see, not only it was possible, but the timer went back to 10 minutes. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that the imprison skill does not have a 24 hours cooldown anymore, but just 15 hours. So, unless you are completely sure that every king from every opponent kingdom has used that skill in the past 15 hours, and even if you play 24-7 it's difficult to know, you might just miss one or two, you should really avoid teleporting outside of your alliance territory in KVK using random teleports. Now, let's speak about the mistakes Bye Bye Byes did and how we can learn from them. Besides getting imprisoned, that can happen to anybody in a rush moment, during the rally, he pulled a lot of his troops outside his city in order to save them. This not only did not save them, but had two important consequences. The first, by pulling out his main garrison, the garrison left on his wall was not only weaker and probably not equipped and not even optimized with garrison talents, but had also healing. Constantine is one of the commanders you should never use on a wall, together with Richard, Unless, of course, you are in the first KVKs and you don't have much of a choice. They heal your troops, which make the battle last longer and bring the slightly wounded units directly back in battle to be killed by the rally hitting your city. That's why the worst reports we see when cities get rallied are exactly from commanders like Richard and Constantine, especially if you get rallied by Attila and Takeda, which is still one of the prime combos for city rallies. The second consequence was that the same marches he pulled out himself were immediately attacked on the field by the enemy forces standing around, making sure that he was taking dead troops automatically, since his hospitals were already full. So he got way more dead troops at the very end of the rally, when his Constantine was weak and very susceptible to the troop differential between the rally and the garrison, 
and his troops died on the field. Of course, even if he had a good control of his emotions in that moment, as you can see from his video, that was a mistake, and he probably wouldn't have done it if he wasn't under pressure. One more thing is that he knew he was out of resources, and a good move could have been to replenish them before the rally was over. In this way, he could have sped up his hospital quickly and maybe reduced the field casualties, even if that meant the enemy could get more loot, even if the loot is neglectable for one rally. A very smart thing he did, though, was to put his weak troops in a rally. Even if you see the icon of Cao Cao fighting on the right side, those troops were actually not engaged in battle. He had a lot of tier 1, tier 2 and some tier 3 troops in his city. What he did was launching a rally on a barbarian fort with those troops because he knew that the weak troops would have filled his hospital first immediately. And again, even if you see the Cao Cao icon fighting, those troops are actually considered to be outside your city. In this way, he managed to save a few troops, even if then he lost them anyway because of the mistakes he did afterwards. Um, I think that the best option here is just to delete the tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 troops you have in your city. So you just don't take that risk. Another good idea would have been to activate a 10% defense token instead of a 5% in order to get a slightly better trade while waiting for the imprison skill or the war frenzy to run out of time. About the war frenzy, remember to never ever deactivate the pop-up that shows that you're about to go in war frenzy. This because you could by mistake attack someone on the field or scout someone without thinking about it and you would not get the warning before it's too late. The warning message actually protects you more than you think. About the commander choices, his choice of Amanitore made actually a lot of sense. In the best scenario, you should garrison with Theodora and YSS, but probably he did not have that, so he went for the best he had in that moment. Another tip I feel like giving to you in order to save more troops is to quickly speed up your hospital and speed up all the troops you are training in that moment before the rally hits and switch to the Byzantium civilization. You will immediately gain 15% extra hospital capacity. Now, depending on your VIP level, you may have less base hospital capacity, but in my case, for example, I could have saved around 110 thousand more troops. The final tip, very important. Let's say you have a mix of tier 5 and tier 4 troops in your city, actually more tier 5 than tier 4. You are quite low in power, let's say around 70 million. You really know that you cannot survive the rallies they are sending on you, especially if you get double imprisoned and the enemies are very close to your city. You keep your cool, you get a rough hit on the first rally, and you don't completely heal your hospital. You try to save as many tier 5 troops as possible by healing only the tier 4, because you know that they are going to fill your hospital again and zero you. In this way, you will at least grant that the ratio of tier 5 killed will be inferior compared to the situation in which you completely speed up your hospitals and you have no control whatsoever on which troops fill the hospital first and which troops die. Depending on the civilization and on the commander we are using to garrison, some troop types will die before the others, but that's maybe a topic for another video. I really hope the tips I gave you were useful and I also hope that Bye Bye Byes will recover from this. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, it's 100% free and I will see you on the next one. Ciao!